Hi everyone and welcome back. This is part one of a series of videos I'm editing from a side-by-side -side trip my friends and I did across the Gaspé region of Quebec. The trip was nine days total, with seven of those days riding trails over 1,200 kilometers or 750 miles worth. It was an amazing adventure and I'm going to tell you all about it. We basically did a large loop. We started in Amqui and we rode to Point à la Croix, New Carlisle, Perse, Murdochville, Mont Saint-Pierre, Cap Chat, and we finished back in Amqui. Since we don't live in Quebec, we had to haul our machines a fair distance just to get there. Some of us drove from Nova Scotia, one of us left from New Brunswick, and two of us from Ontario. Depending on where we left from, it was between 7 and 14 hours of driving. I'll save you this suspense and tell you up front the trip was worth it. But you should know that if you're planning on doing this trip, it definitely can be challenging. Throughout these videos, I'll explain what issues we ran into and how we handled them. Luckily, you won't have to deal with some of the issues we did because you'll get to learn from our mistakes. If you and your friends want to do this trip, I suggest you watch these videos and then go to my website because I have helpful tips and links to government websites where you can get a pass and you can help build and create your own GPS routes. I'll have the link in the description below. Before we get into the main part of this video, I'll quickly let you know three things that you need to know to do this trip. One, you need a Quebec ATV trail pass. The link to it is on my website. It's going to cost about $200 to get the pass to do this trip. But when you see the conditions of the trails and the amount of signage they have under there, you'll understand why it costs that much money. Two, trails have a width restriction of 66 inches. This isn't a suggestion either. They're very serious about that. If your machine is any wider than that, you're not going to fit across some of the bridges on this trip, and there's no way to get around the large rivers. Three, they have an awesome interactive map system that generates GPS trails for you. All you do is pick the starting location for the day that you want and the end location and it creates the GPS trail. It knows if trails are out or closed because of washouts and it will route you around those. The green highlighted trail that you see is the route that the computer here just picked for us and you click the export button in the top left corner. Down in the bottom left corner of Chrome, which is what I'm using, it downloads the track for you. It's that easy. In Chrome, it automatically downloads to your downloads folder on your computer so it's easy to find. Then what I do is I go into Google Maps, create myself a new map, and import all of the exported routes so I can make one big giant GPS track for the entire week. Here's something important to keep in mind. If you create these tracks months in advance, make sure you double check at least a few days before you go to make sure they don't change because in the time that you create them, in the time you go, you could have a change in the trail because there could be something where there's a washout in the closed trail. We didn't do that. That's why we ran into a few sections where we had closed trails we had to deal with. And this was just one of a dozen trees or more we had to cut down on this particular trail. Overall, we had a great time. Stuff like this just adds to the adventure for us. If you like what you see, please do me a favor and click the like button and the subscribe button. Good job, Patrick. Well, here it is. We're getting ready to head out to Quebec, uh, to the Gas Bay region for a week. And I gotta say, I was kind of hoping for a little bit better weather <laughs> than this to start the trip off with, but uh, hopefully we'll drive out of it. The weather did clear up, which was a bonus because when you're hauling a trailer for seven or eight hours, the last thing you want is heavy rains. Our destination for the night was a hotel in Amqui called Auberge L'Ambassadeur. We picked this spot because they had nice rooms, they have a really nice restaurant, and they also let you leave your machines there for a week, or rather not your machines, but your trucks and trailers out behind the hotel. And it's just down the road and across the street from where the trail starts. There's also a few other hotels in town that I believe that will let you do the same thing, so you do have a few options. Nobody's tracking your whereabouts. <laughs> That's a nice trailer, man. After we arrived, we offloaded our machines and parked them around the front. Then we went and checked into the hotel and we went down to their restaurant for supper. The staff were really friendly and accommodating and the food was really good. I really can't recommend this place enough. The next morning we got up early and walked 400 meters north of the hotel that we were at and we went to the Pastali restaurant, which is also attached to the Select Hotel. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the other options you have if you want to stay in the night here before you start your trip. After we ate here, we went back to our hotel and we packed up all of our gear and then we put it in the machines. The anticipation for a trip like this for a bunch of grown men going away on a week-long ATV trip, it's like children waiting for Christmas. Day one. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody's packed up. Look at the gear. Gear, gear, gear. 
Our motto for gear on trips like this is if you have space, bring it with you. Just checking out all the gear before we get all dirty. You might notice that the vast majority of our gear is packed in watertight bags. The last thing you want is having anything that you have, especially clothing or electronic gear, getting wet. All right, here we are, day one, Gas Bay. Just about to head out. When you leave the Aubert's Hotel, you have to drive on a paved road here through town. About 500 meters or so is not very far at all before you get on the trail. This is the start of the trail outside of Amqui, and as you can tell, it's in great shape. Uh, and most of the trip is like this. Lots and lots of changes every day. Sometimes you're driving down along sea level like we are now, then you go up into the mountains a few thousand feet, and some of those ascents up into the mountains are very quick and very steep. You'll see that in one of the other videos. Everything was going well until I noticed my machine was starting to almost overheat. It was like one bar away from going into limp mode. Lucky for me, we were driving on a connector road that had houses on it. I saw a house with a hose. They let me use it to wash out the radiator. Turns out it was full of dried mud from a ride that I had been on a few weeks before the trip. Dale brought his own hose and little thin wand that gets in to clean the radiator. We ended up using it a few times throughout the week because there's so much dust here. Every time you go through a puddle, your radiator gets wet and then you're driving for hours and all this dust is building up on it. And then it doesn't take too much some days to get your uh, radiator to overheat. Uh, I've already scratched it out. Okay. Uh, it's glass, isn't it? No. no it's not. Oh, it's polycarbonate. We only took a quick break Where's here for about 15 bridge? minutes and then we get back on the trail. But then, after only about 15 minutes of driving, I noticed the flat ferry had visited. It's in there pretty good. The flat ferry was no match for John. He's the flat whisperer. This is why I tell everyone who does these types of trips to make sure you have an air compressor and several tire plugs because sometimes one hole takes several plugs. Oh my oh, god. That is oh, like an oh, it's nice and look. Look at that. And sometimes it helps to have a John with you, but not our John. Get your own. That's a, that's a, that looks like an arrowhead. Look yeah, at that. It does. It does. Let's not complain. A little more in it. Think you need another one? Oh. Probably a couple, eh? I'm sure of it. What you got on there? Oh, just a little grease, thing. like Vaseline. Little grease to help the let us slide. The slide in, in a little I easier. I said better with grease. Then <laughs> <laughs> you hear you loose, 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 loose. Cool. I cut, you, I cut the moose on the phone? camera to Patrick. What's that? I cut the moose on the camera. Oh, good. The first flat tire of the trip, and it's mine again, just like Newfoundland last year. Oh, it's always me with the first flat. And look at the grins on Howie and Bill. <laughs> Those plugs lasted me that entire trip in Quebec and then later that fall in September in Newfoundland. I told everyone else they weren't allowed to get a flat for the rest of the week. A few moments later. But apparently Bruce and Tony didn't listen. Do that again. So, so far the flats are going in order. The first guy, now the second guy. Who's next? Might want to change up that position. <laughs> Not that new rig with a flat tire, is it? Yep. You're gonna need more than one. That's that one. That's minus one. The boys fixed that flat in just a few minutes, then we were back on the trail trying to make up time because we were late for lunch. How's the heat in your machine? It's so overheating or? No, no, it's, it's pretty good. Is it good? Uh, the windshield. Is warm up coming up that hill? Hot? It, it really. Well, sucks the heat. Yeah. When, when oh the yeah. Ninety-one degrees. It's hot out today. <laughs> Terrence and I chuckle every time we see uh, Dwayne open up his door, driving down the road, trying to get some breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out the food we've got here. We've got homemade jerky. Those of you familiar with my channel know that we never go hungry on these types of trips.
After being back on the trail for a few hours, we came across this section of trail where there was a bunch of downed trees. Not this one here in particular, I'll show you in a second, but there was tons of trees down. I don't know what happened, but we decided not to go in there and try to drive through it because it was just too much of a mess. So we had to drive on some paved road for a couple kilometers to get around that section to get back onto the trail we needed to go. But it was kind of a big detour and added uh, a lot more to our day than we were expecting. We found our way back to the trail after a while and then the sun was getting low in the sky so in the woods it was looking like it was dark out or getting darker but it wasn't really so bad and before we got to the uh, the hotel that we were going to for the night we ended up going through this long section of trail that you see here now it was really nice and the way it was all cut out they had obviously spent a lot of money on this section of the trail Patrick just let the gas out of his tank <laughs> now he's putting gas in the other tank Tony's saying gas for some yes. reason. Any gas, gas in it? <laughs> that's, that's from Sling Blade. Gas. Any oh, gas yeah. in it? It ain't got no gas in it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yep, shoot the ball. Tanks can heat it up today. Are they ever? Huh? Putting some gas in it, Holly? Gas, take gas. <laughs> We had a few hours to go and we were pretty much all low on gas so several of us decided to put some fuel in the machines. It was at this point for some reason a few of us left our gas caps off, forgot to put them back on and we noticed when we get to the hotel and uh, luckily I had a spare with me because it's not the first time I've done that and uh, later throughout the week there was two or three other guys who did the same thing so it was the week of the missing gas caps. That was a good hill climb. Yes sir. It was so. How are we doing, sir? Doing good. Good, good. <laughs> a good hill climb. Everybody, everybody made it up the hill. Yeah. Which one? CBC Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> we finally got into the hotel in a provincial around 8.40 p.m. And we drove 220 kilometers that day. But we really probably should have only done about 150. It was a great adventure. And everyone was happy to get to the hotel and get it cleaned up. Look at those dusty faces. Please consider clicking the like and subscribe button if you liked what you saw. Stay tuned for part two where we see lots more beautiful scenery and we also run into quite a few problems.